Once again, a very warm welcome to the program. This is The Morning Call. I am Nyasha K. Mutizwa. Now we start the show in the Central African Republic. In exile, after being driven from power in 2013, Francois Bozizé returned to Bangui, confirmed by his party and his relatives. His return is shrouded in mystery as he faces an international arrest warrant for war crimes and genocide linked to violent incidents in 2013. One year before the presidential election scheduled for the end of 2020, his return could redraw the political landscape in the CAR. His return could be dictated by his desire to respect the electoral code, which stipulates that the presidential candidates of December 2020 must be on the national territory at least one year before the election, Ruth. Eh bien, Nyasha, cette soudaine apparition de l'ex-chef d'État centrafricain à Bangui. All right, Nyasha, this sudden appearance of the former Central African head of state in Bangui raises many concerns, both nationally and internationally. How did François Bozizé get back to the country when he is still under United Nations sanctions with a ban on airlines to transport him to the Central African Republic? He seek refuge in Uganda since 2013 when he was overthrown by the former Seleka rebels. His arrival dazzled even the Central African African authorities who did not welcome the news of his arrival according to reports. Well, François Bozizé is in Bangui, but what happens next? He has arrived 12 months before the electoral deadline as required by his country's constitution for anyone who wants to take part in the 2020 elections. His party can undoubtedly sweep the 2020 race, suggests the Burkina Bay newspaper Sid Wire. Yes, and now to understand more, we have the Secretary General of his party, known as Kwanakwa, and uh, known as KNK, actually. We have Bertine Bayer joining us here on the Morning Call. A very warm welcome to the program. Now, how has Bozize's return been received by his party, given the looming election? Today, we are satisfied. De son arrivée, we are happy about his arrival and presence on the ground because it will help to bring our members together. We have been battling without him, but today his presence is a plus for us. You know, we held many meetings recently in the districts of Bangui. His presence today allows us to uh, believe that in a year's time, when we go for the Bozizi elections, our champion will lead the KNK to an indisputable uh, victory because we consider that the next elections uh, must be fair and sufficiently transparent uh, in order to avoid any crisis in the Central African Republic. Well, we are talking about a man facing an international arrest warrant. When is the official release of your leader, François Bozizé? Écoutez sa réponse au micro de notre correspondant sur place. Mais ces jours-ci, dans les tout prochains jours, well, in the next few days, Bozizé will address the Central African population and international press. So everyone will realize that he has returned to the country under the conditions that we know fully well. It's a set, a set up by the government to keep him away. Well, he has now arrived in Central Africa. He's in good health and he's ready to face all battles ahead. Our correspondent also asked Mr. Bear if there are fears of Mr. Bozizé being arrested given he is wanted for very serious state-level charges. Je voulais profiter de votre micro pour dire ceci. Il y a comme une politique de deux parts. I like to take advantage of this opportunity to say that there is some sort of a double standard policy here. Abdullah Hussein, who was tried and sentenced in absentia, arrived in Bangui, took part in a workshop that was to work on the evaluation of the Khartoum agreements. We have never seen in any country in the world anyone who has been sentenced and be protected in absentia. So we are attacking François Bozizé and leaving Abdullah Hussein and other criminals like Ali Daras. Like Siddiqui. So it is a double standard policy that we denounce, that we condemn, and that we think that this can no longer continue in this country. It must not be allowed. 
You're listening there to Bertine Beyer, who is the Secretary General of the Kwanakwa Party, KNK, speaking to our correspondent there in Bangui in the Central African Republic. Back to you, Ruth. Merci à vous, uh, right, thank you very much for the update in relation to the issues in Bangui. We have more stories making headlines across the continent next. We have the African Journal.